Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Uh, my name is Cassidy Diamond, and I am the uh, public programs and events producer here at the International Documentary Association. Um, before we get started um, on our very exciting conversation about Netflix's documentary, A Secret Love, uh, moderated by Fortune Feimster, I just wanted to give a few opening notes. Um, first off, um, I'd like to take a moment um, for some land acknowledgements. Um, I and most of the people here uh, on this panel come to you from Los Angeles, uh, which is on the occupied territory of the Tongva and the Chumash people who have stewarded this land for generations. Uh, we at IDA would like to acknowledge the indigenous people on whose land we stand on today. And we'd just like to take that minute and we will be recording this conversation. Uh, it will be posted on our YouTube page in the coming days. Um, but the chat has been disabled for this conversation. Um, we will not be taking audience questions. You're just in for an amazing treat uh, from our panel here. Um, and you know, you're not here to see me, you're here to see them. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, welcome up our moderator. Um, Fortune Themester, and she's gonna take it from here. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we got gotcha. you. Okay, yes. Hi, guys. It's Fortune Themester. Uh, I am so honored to get to moderate this panel. I'm such a huge fan of A Secret Love. I watched this documentary with my partner and cried like a baby. Um, I post. I got such a reaction that I did not expect from myself uh, after watching it that I posted it online, just me crying, sobbing. Uh, <laughs> and then they're like, maybe Fortune would like to ask us some questions. She has an emotional attachment. Uh, so this is really cool for me. Um, the story just really hit a nerve because Terry and Pat, amazing love story. Um, seven, over seven decades of love, 62 of that was a secret and then just getting to see this love story and the care for each other and oh I just I love it so much um so I can't wait for you guys to meet the people that made it happen so I'm going to introduce them right now uh, I'm very honored to introduce the director of A Secret Love Chris Boland uh the he's also the great nephew of Terry Donahue um and your mom's Diana right? She is. She is. Diana. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who's also in the film. Uh, we have uh, producer Alexa Fogel um, also in here. She's amazing producer, amazing casting director. There she is. Uh, her producing partner and producer of the film, Brendan Mason. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> our executive producer, Mary Alicia. I told her I would her last name, Mary Licio, <laughs> <laughs> from Blue Mouse. Uh, so thank you guys for uh, doing this and letting me be a part of it. Um, Chris, I, I figured I'd start with you. Uh, ma man, this story is incredible. Um, obviously, this is part of your family's story. And seeing obviously Pat and Terry have a, a very unique story but what made you decide to take it to the next level and actually start filming it well you know fortunate it first of all I'm so happy to have you thank you for doing this and I really appreciate it. and I'm glad the film resonated with you it means it means so much to us all of us as filmmakers um and thank you to the IDA this is just great um I you know in 2009 I flew out to Chicago to visit my great aunt with my wife. And uh, we uh, went back to their home in St. Charles and we're having their customary rum and Coke and playing cards. Um, and they said, we have something to tell you, uh, we're gay. And my wife and I said, thank you so much for telling us, we love you. We gave them a great big hug. Uh, and then these floodgates opened up in them fortune and, and stories started spilling out of them like little giddy schoolgirls. <laughs> things that I had never heard in my entire life. And I've been close to both of them my whole life, very close to them. Mm -hmm. And as I sat there watching them tell these stories, 
I, 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 I'd never seen anything like it. I had never heard of a seven decade love story between two women. Um, I had never seen two women of that age coming out of the closet in their late eighties. And some of these stories were just so beautiful. They, they, you know, they were talking about kissing in the middle of a dust storm in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan in the 1940s, and they could steal a kiss because no one could see them. And it was at that moment, watching them and hearing them that it was like a light bulb went off. And I, I knew, I, I, I was compelled to just to tell the story somehow. Mm -hmm. When you told them that you were gonna, like that you were hoping to do this, I mean, they had kept it a secret for so long. Did they have any reservations about, I mean, you go from being so secretive to like, I mean, more public than ever. What was their feelings about you filming? I mean, it's a great question. And, you know, you would think that, yes, there would be some reservations, but um, they they were very open to it. It was almost as if Fortune, once they had opened those floodgates, once they had come out, it was like this weight had been lifted off both of their shoulders and they just mm -hmm. wanted to tell their story. And, you know, uh, they did trust me, uh, which I'm very grateful for, you know, we have a very good relationship and, and, you know, ultimately bringing on Alex and Brendan, um, they, we all became like a family and they, they trusted mm -hmm. Brendan and Alexa, which is a very important part of this whole thing for me, because this is a story very close to my heart. It's very personal. It's my family. So I needed to have people with me and, and a part of this that, that we could all trust and that everybody, um, kind of got along and, 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 and trusted each other. So they were, yeah. you know, the one thing that they did kept saying fortune is that they just could not understand why anybody wanted to make a movie about them. And they say that Pat still, she's getting fan mail from around the world and she still does not understand. It. Pat, Pat doesn't even know. I mean, my partner's ready to leave me for Pat <laughs> because she, she heard Pat and Terry reading those love letters. And I looked over and I was like, uh Oh, <laughs> what what's happening over here so pat yeah pat's beloved so is terry um and uh yeah for good reason uh alexa brendan how did the two of you uh become attached to the project how what what drew you to want to be a part of this i met chris when he was a graduate acting student at nyu i did a workshop for them and we had stayed in touch over time <laughs> and Brendan and I had never worked on a documentary because I feel, I think we both felt like you need to be value added to whatever you're working on and documentarians are so incredibly <laughs> knowledgeable about how they get their grants and how they do this and that. And Chris asked me if he could talk to me about this idea that he had. And I mean, I, I have to say it was immediate. He told me the story and it's so unique and so remarkable that, um, I mean, I remember going to Brendan and saying, I think we're doing our first documentary. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we decided that because they would be subjects and because of their age and because of all of that, that we should go and visit them yeah. to see if this would gel because it would be a very small group of people. And Brendan. So in June of 2013, the three of us flew to Chicago and drove out to tiny suburb of St. Charles and went to the house that we see in the film. And I know the moment that it was the big light bulb moment for both Alexa and I, we were sitting at the dining room table with Terry and Pat and Chris were in the other room and Terry would giggle like a schoolgirl about Pat. And you oh. think about people being together for seven decades and their eyes lighting up and, and kind of coming alive when they talk about this person, you just know that this is like a very deep well of emotion. And then yeah. just the question too of, you know, most people nowadays come out in their 20s or late teens. So to put yourself through that, which is not mm -hmm. an easy process when you have a lifetime of experience under your belt and you're in your 80s is a kind of amazing thing. And we had never seen that before. So we just, that was it. We didn't have a choice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you guys really captured that love story too i mean that shot of from the outside of the house uh where pat was tucking terry in oh i mean i still like look uh oh, it's like just the sweetest and i think that you know that's what this story you know not only i mean there's so many levels to it but at the heart of it was just this love story like i had never seen before um in a way where two people just truly 
cared for each other. And, and that really, that was amazing. It was amazing that you guys captured that. How long did you end up filming the story (laughs) or the two of them? (laughs) Well, it was what we filmed for five and a half years. Wow. And then another two years of post post production essentially. So mm-hmm. it we have a lot a lot of footage on the cutting room floor, some amazing stuff. But yeah. um yeah, it was it was we put a lot of work into it. <laughs> Absolutely. Was there yeah. ever a point that Pat and Terry were like, Oh, we're good <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Cause the, the, you know, being filmed had to have been pretty foreign to them. I I mean I remember one conversation <laughs> one conversation <laughs> about 4 years in yeah. where you know we had been running around in the snow all day and the coats on and the coats off and the microphones in the car and I think they had just kind of we it was a long day and and we were sitting in their living room and they said you know why are you doing this and you know how long will this be going for and we all sat down and it was the three of us and our director of photography steve kazmierski who shot the whole thing and our sound mixer same sound mixer all five years it was really just the five of us and we said you know if we can get if we can finish this film and if we can get people to see it if we can have one girl who lives on a farm in Iowa, who's Mm -hmm. 15, 16 years old, who could see this and see this love story that you guys have, which is so, you know, aspirational. You need Mm -hmm. to see examples of yourself in media of what you might could be someday. You know, if we could get it in front of one person, that would, that would make all of this worth it. And they agreed. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so you guys filmed, um, you, you guys did that filming five and a half years. And is that, Mary, you might be able to speak to this. Is that when you guys got on board? Um, they were actually it- still filming um, and continued to film after mm-hmm. Blumhouse got on board. I wasn't even at Blumhouse when um, they had started and, and Alexa and my colleague, Jeremy Gold, I think were out for dinner and it was, and Marcy Wiseman as well from Blumhouse and said, what are you all working on? And when mm-hmm. Alexa shared this story, they said, well, we just got to Blumhouse. We're doing documentaries. This sounds amazing. Let's talk more. Um, oh, cool. And so I think while I was there, we definitely shot the Winnebago trip um, <laughs> back to Canada, which was just, mm-hmm. you know, we were all just on pins and needles the whole time. Where are you now? Where are you now? Yeah. <laughs> Chris and Brendan. So yeah, we got involved while they were still filming. And then you, and then, and then you guys got um, teamed up with Ryan Murphy near the la- latter part. And did the, the, did the film shift at all or the, did it change at all when, you know, when different voices were coming o- on board? Alexa, would you like to? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what the, I mean, you know, Ryan is, as Brendan often says, you know, such a great champion of sort of unseen people. Mm-hmm. And I've worked with him as a casting director and Jason Blum has uh, produced with him The Normal Heart. And what happened sort of immediately is that once we were at Netflix, we could um, sort of breathe a little bit. Uh-huh. And with his sort of help and influence and I, they let us do a few more things mm-hmm. and we're, have been unbelievably supportive. But I think that, you know, we were talking about how this takes, took five and a half years. I mean, part of the nature of that is that because we kept running out of money. Yeah. I mean, that's a long until, time. Until Blumhouse came on and then until mm-hmm. Ryan and Netflix came on. And so it, it sort of changed the course of what we were seeing as they began to age. Mm-hmm. But I think what Ryan was so brilliant at was also seeing the love story and the aging story in such a clear way because mm-hmm. he's brilliant. Um, yeah. And you know, we had been running on fumes for such a long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Well, and Thank also you. Ryan just, he just gave us a lot of confidence because he said, mm-hmm. you guys, you did it with the love story. You can hang your hat on that. You don't need to worry about, oh, do we need other things in this film? That's this film. So mm-hmm. that was kind of a, you know, for having been at this for so long to hear that across the table from him was, you know, amazing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, absolutely. we're we're underplaying. It was a it's a big big thing <laughs> to have that kind of support. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, did you guys 
feel when you were filming this? Obviously, um, Terry and Pat were were older. Did you feel this sort of pressure to like, sort of like almost a race against time where you're like, I was, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Brenda and I would have conversations that in retrospect probably seem melodramatic where we would be like, you know, we have to finish this because mm -hmm. they're getting older. And, yeah. yeah. And, you know, there were times when we couldn't, like, get the money together for a trip. So we'd have to say, Chris, it's you. And Chris would go with his 7D and it would just be him shooting on a weekend. So it was like that kind of triage situation in the mm -hmm. first two and a half years, depending on, you know, what had come in that month. Yeah. Which I think, which I think to Brennan, you know, and like, you know, that was part of a, it was almost a happy accident in a way because, you know, some of those more intimate moments, um, when you say did they get tired of of being filmed, I, I, mm -hmm. because I'm their relative and we have such a close relationship, I was able to get in there, I think, and they could just forget about me. Um, mm -hmm. There's that scene in the hospital when she when she bends down and kisses um, Pat's in the hospital and kisses her hand and says, I love you, Patty. Um, mm -hmm. Those little moments like that um, were just a result of, 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 to Brennan's point, of running out of money and needing to do what we needed to do. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, capturing some of those those beautiful moments. Mm hmm I will One, say, well, yeah, go ahead. Just that, you know, you asked about this before about, you know, was there any resistance to this? And what I was so struck by is their love for Chris is so palpable and their trust. And mm -hmm. then they got to know us. And I think that was all very smooth. But it was pretty extraordinary that they didn't get impatient, you know, maybe mm -hmm. occasionally if they were tired and the coats are on and off, but really rarely. And I think that was all about that level of trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just how much they love their great nephew. Well, one, I was going to say one of the scenes that really stood out for me and it was sort of revealed uh, that you had kind of were like, it almost seemed like you were sort of secretly filming that the fight, uh, the fight with uh, your mom and, um, and Pat and, you know, that was a really, it was so real. You're seeing, you know, a conversation, a tough conversation happening between family where they're like, you know, I, th this, you guys, I'm worried for your health and your future and, and I, we're fight. I mean, we're fighting and uh, did they know that you were filming? Was that something that later that they were like, hey. <laughs> yeah, no, Fortune, that was, that was crazy. I mean, literally um, everybody, Brennan, Alex, you know, Steve, Doug, everybody was there. Mm -hmm. and they had just left and we didn't we had money for three days and yeah. we, we got some great stuff but then it was time to go and so I was going to stay behind and film for some more for a few more days and mm -hmm. we're sitting at that table and this big eruption with my mother happened and I remember mm -hmm. sitting there going oh my god I have to capture this I can't yell cut and run to my car to get my good camera Right. So I looked down and my iPhone was there and I uh -huh. just turned off my iPhone <laughs> and I was praying to God that I had enough memory on it. And I, and I yeah. just filmed it and they had, they had no idea that I was mm -hmm. filming it. There was a really interesting time when Pat was looking right at me and mm -hmm. I just have the iPhone here and I'm looking right at her and I'm just acting like silently going, you know, shaking my head. And, and mm -hmm. I thought for sure she knew, but, but they didn't. And, um, of course, I told them afterwards, I said, listen, mm -hmm. I, I filmed you and they were shocked. Um, but I said, if you're uncomfortable with me using it, I won't use it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm not here to, you know, to, to exploit my family. Um, right. And they said, you know what? But they said, well, do you think it's important? I, I, I said, I do. I think it's a very important mm -hmm. conversation. So they said, go ahead and use it. And, I, and then I got on the phone with Brendan Alex and I was like, oh, my God, you should see what I just ca captured. And I uploaded mm -hmm. it right away so I wouldn't lose it. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those things and it, it was very raw and it was, it was tough for me. It had kind of starting yeah. that line between family member and filmmaker, but it was, it was poignant, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That, that scene is an amazing credit to the technical skills of our editor, Bernadine Kolish, because Absolutely. if you watch it, it looks like it's two cameras. She's cutting back and forth, but truly Chris just had the iPhone the whole time that he would sometimes kind of move back and forth on the table. And I think Bernadine spent a week and a half just on that scene to make it watchable because yeah, you yeah. Know, she's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Yeah. She's I mean, incredible. cause I, I didn't even realize it was, that was what was happening until a little bit later in the scene that you sort of saw the, 
uh, outline of the, the or some somehow it was revealed. I can't remember exactly. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that was a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So she did a, uh, an amazing job. Um, you said Bernadine, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's she, an amazing, uh, amazing, amazing editor. Yeah. yeah. Actually, about 95% of this film was shot single camera, which uh, I think you would not know looking at it um, because she just manages to cut around a table at that dinner party scene when they see their friends in Chicago. That was all mm -hmm. single camera. And she's just an amazing um, technician and craftswoman. She really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, the editor can make or break a film. Oh and my so, God. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, that's amazing. How especially did you when you're dealing with that amount, oh, sorry, I was just say, especially when you're dealing with that amount of footage from the archive and the home videos to our interviews with, you know, mm -hmm. other people sort of outside the story. And so it can be, it's really hard. I mean, hundreds of hours oh. of footage. Oh, yeah. I mean, were you guys all having to sort of, how, how did you even keep up with, <laughs> I mean, all those years of footage? I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know Plus how all, you even know what Chris you have. Found. Yeah. I mean, Chris found a whole treasure trove of footage they didn't even really know they had. Yeah. And that added to the pile. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah. Jeremy Gold from Blumhouse actually came down to New York to, for a meeting with all of us. And I was, I was still just getting eight, mil, eight millimeter footage digitized and transferred and bringing over suitcases of, of footage to Bernadine in the editing studio. And she, Bernadine would be excited. I, and, and the other side of her would be like, oh my God, <laughs> there's more. Piling it on. There's more, oh, there's yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I was going to ask, you know, coming off that scene too. I mean, what did, you know, we talk about Terry and Pat a lot. What did your mom think about this? Because there were times that, uh, I mean, that sometimes she had to be the the quote unquote bad guy in that she was for for their own safety was the one who was really saying you guys gotta you can't live here anymore it's dangerous I'm worried about Terry I mean was she how did she feel about the film once it came out you know my mother's a, an amazing woman and she 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 basically didn't, she, she was up for showing whatever I had filmed. She didn't want to glaze over anything, which I loved. And she wasn't afraid of, of you know, she, I, I told her that I was, it was very important for me to portray my entire family as three-dimensional characters, flaws and all. And that ultimately as human beings, we all have those sides. We all go through these things. And she really understood that. And um, she's, she was unbelievable. I mean, yeah. so supportive the entire time. And, you know, and she, she did get scared a little bit that, you know, she was going to perceive, be perceived as perhaps the bad guy, as you said. But, uh, you know, I told her that you're not, and I think the audience, I hope the audience sees where you're coming from, that you're oh, out yeah. of the love for your aunts. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think this is part of the, you know, the universal quality of this film that we all have people in our lives that we have to kind of get into those arguments with. People are, are mm -hmm. you know, our parents have to go into homes and, um and so she understood that, and she she was amazing throughout the entire process. Yeah, Diane, a remarkable woman. She's um, a, she's tough and smart and a survivor, but she's compassionate and she was an educator and she's patient. But you mm -hmm. know what's incredible about the stuff in this film is it's her at a breaking point because of what Terry means to her. Mm -hmm. um, but she's I love her. Yeah. Oh, you can totally see the love I mean that their bond was so special and you know you guys did a good job of painting that bond from her childhood till now um so it really was like a almost like a mother figure um, well and fortune that's exactly right I mean the, the the relationship between them was more like a mother daughter my mother mm -hmm. always said that even before we started filming this movie um Terry was like a mother to her in a lot of ways um not mm -hmm. a great aunt or not an aunt Right. Um, so they had that closeness their their whole life. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think that this, uh, obviously from uh, the good news is that they ended up getting to get married, which was just uh, more <laughs> of this during that scene. Um, and your family was there and it was such a celebration. Uh, do you, I mean, I don't even know what I'm trying to ask. I mean, they didn't come out. To, to your family until 2009, 
obviously many decades of being together uh, before that. And was it, was your family's acceptance of that? Like, did this whole experience help with that? Or was, you know what I mean? Was that an evolving experience for you guys? Yeah, I think it was, you know, I mean, there, the love for Terry and Pat superseded any kind of preconceived notions of, 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 of what it means to be gay or lesbian or LGBTQ community. You know, it, it, you know, were there questions? Yes. And, uh, you know, you see that with interviews with Tammy and, but ultimately, um, the love kind of conquered all of it and their love for Terry and Pat, um, was at the, was at the court at it for them. And so there was a journey for everyone, uh, mm-hmm. including a journey for my mom and Pat. I mean, their relationship completely transformed through the course of this film. Also, they were, they were close, but not nearly as close as they are now. Mm-hmm. And, and the other thing that was wonderful is that the biological family and their found family got to meet each other. Mm-hmm. You know, they came out to their biological family, but they had been out to their found family for decades. They had these wonderful friends that you see in the film and even more yeah. that you don't. Um, and so that, that, that wedding scene, you know, if you notice it, that there's a table at the very beginning of the wedding, the biological family's at one table, the found mm-hmm. family's at the other table. And by the end of the wedding, everyone's together. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, I just, I think that's wonderful. Yeah, that had to have been so special. I, I, we found ourselves, we were doing something, I think we were in Palm Springs and my partner and I don't have kids and we were with friends. This was, uh, I don't remember when, um, maybe the beginning of quarantine. I don't know. We were socially distanced. <laughs> uh, but I was like, uh, I was like, we're like Terry and Pat. This is, <laughs> this is like our gay family. <laughs> So there, there are our beacons now and everything that we do. Um, but I love that they got to, after so many years of having almost like a double life in, in a way, they got to bring everything together in this really beautiful way. Um, what has the response been? I'm sure all of you have experienced different um, things, but but can you touch on some of the feedback you've gotten because like you said Brendan this is a representation matters and seeing yourself out you know someone's story like this is a big deal I mean just speaking on behalf of Blumhouse it's been amazing I mean not a day goes by since the movie was released that I don't get a text or an email from someone I haven't talked to in years to someone I know really well telling me how much the movie meant to them. Um, My 16 year old uh, little cousin came out to me after she found out about the film and she has no idea about the history of of what those before her had to go through. She can come out at 16. Mm -hmm. To another friend, and I sent uh, Chris the note, a friend who was gay watched it with his mother who he called a late in life lesbian. Um, he got her onto Netflix remotely, which he was really proud of himself for, but then they yeah. watched together and he said they both laughed, they cried and had a conversation unlike any kind of conversation they'd ever had before. So it's been really just personally and, and professionally so gratifying. Yeah. And can you, Brendan, can you talk a little bit about the sort of global, I mean, it's yeah, been a bit bigger uh, than anything we could have hope for that's the thing you know you you kind of can't prepare yourself for what a big reaction like this would feel like because there's just nothing comparable you know when we started this it was like us lugging equipment and you know the stories we've been telling you and then to end up in a situation where you know somebody presses a button on a day and then your movie is in 190 countries and subtitled in 26 languages and overdubbed in nine. And I woke up the morning it dropped at five because I was wondering if the Times was going to do a review. And I went on Twitter and like thousands of people had already watched the film, which means that they watched it immediately when it dropped. And then in that half hour, they were on Twitter talking about it. And you just kind of can't prepare yourself for the scale of the global reach factor. And I know Chris and his mom have gotten, I mean, we've all gotten a variety of messages of all kinds from people, but Chris, that one in particular that you've talked about is just so moving. The messages that Diana gets. 
Yeah, so just it's been these stream of messages from people around the world, but my mother got one from a man in, um, uh, I can't remember, South Africa maybe, or, or um, but then anyway, he was, he was talking about how he, he, he looked up to Pat and Terry and how he wished that he could live his life um, like they did and find someone to love like they mm-hmm. did and have someone like Diana like they did. And, and he, you know, his English was good, but it was a little broken, but it was so powerful because he said, but not me, but not me, but not me. Mm-hmm. And my mother uh, broke down into tears and, and she sent it to me and it was just beautiful. And, and, and that's just one story of hundreds that have come in to all of us mm-hmm. over the past month. And, you know, we forget that this is some terrible things are still happening to the LGBTQ community all around the world. Um, and so it's heartening to hear that some of them are seeing this story and, 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 you know, I hope it gives them hope. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a pretty powerful experience. Not to mention yeah. that it's getting flowers from Australia. Yeah. Oh, really? Pat, Pat's in heaven. Pat's in seventh <laughs> heaven with all of them. Oh my gosh, Pat. Is, Pat is still in the retirement community in Canada? She right? is. So she's two, two blocks from my mom, Fortune, which is great. Mm-hmm. Before COVID, my mom would see her pretty much every day with, with um, uh, my, my niece. He, my mother yeah. would bring my niece to visit Pat and they're very close. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's there. And actually, what is so great, she just screened A Secret Love with some members virtually distanced at the home a couple days wow. ago. And she was worried because wow. there's still that, that thing about being twice closeted, going back into her home. Mm-hmm. with the predominantly heterosexual, you know, population in there and being the only lesbian woman. Yeah. Um, but she watched it with these people in their late 80s, early 90s, and they loved it. Oh, that's so, awesome. Which was, which is, I, was, I, was, you know, I was a little, you know, I didn't know how it was going to be received, but they loved it, which yeah. just moved me. And, and it moved Pat. And yeah. Pat is just strutting around that place now, which is... Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting watch- fan art. Fan art, art too. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. They're they're icons. Yeah. I don't I don't want Pat to meet my partner. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> 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 but she but she's doing okay during COVID and everything. She's staying strong and just. She happy is. You know, we had, yeah. we had yeah we had a lot. She got to do this a lot. She was on Access Hollywood. I mean. and, and got to do a lot of those fun things and yeah. and she's just enjoying sitting in her apartment and reading all these letters about you oh. know how how much the film how much terry and pat resonated with them uh, with, these, with these people all over and so it, she's just she really enjoys it yeah people keep writing me since i posted about it and they want pat to put out a book with all of her poems and i go i don't know those were for terry uh but they were so uh they were so beautiful you know that people were like oh how to how do i get these uh, you know access to points like this i'm like i don't know pat pat's a baller so she's she's busy (laughs) (laughs) now i was gonna ask um i had originally when i when the the trailer first came out for this. I, I was drawn to it because uh, Terry was a member of the professional women's bas- uh, basketball <laughs> baseball league, and uh, obviously League of Their Own is one of my favorite films. Which uh, you know, we know what that, that it was about that world. And so I originally was like re- wanted to see the story because I was like, oh my god, that's, what's a, what a cool connection. I don't know much about the the actual women who played in that league. Um, and I love seeing, you know, Pat wearing the shirts and Terry giving out the cards, uh, her, her base, the baseball card. Did, uh, did Terry get to see the, the film before she passed? Yeah, she did, Fortune, and I'm, I'm so glad she did. I flew up to Canada uh, about eight months before she passed away, and, and I, we had at that point a fine cut of the film. Um, so I had my computer, my hard drive, and I, I sat down with her and, and uh, Pat and my mom, and um, they all sat on the floor. I, my mom was on the floor, and Terry and Pat were in their chairs side by side, mm-hmm. uh, holding hands, mm-hmm. and um, watched the film together. And it was 
beautiful. I mean, I actually got, I filmed a little bit of it on my iPhone and I, it, you know, it's pretty emotional for me to look back on, but mm -hmm. uh, they sat there and they laughed and seeing that eight millimeter footage of them together riding bikes the 1940s all the way through, uh, they just giggled and, and, you know, and there were some tough parts in the film that they watched, um, mm -hmm. but it was, it was a really wonderful uh, experience. And I'm so glad Terry got to say it, see it. She kept saying to me that, Am I going to see this damn thing before I die? And I said, <gasps> I promise you will. I promise yeah. you will. Um, so it was, it was, it was great. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad she got to to see it with Pat. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a legacy! Mm -hmm. And and she was 93. That's pretty incredible. Um, yeah, and you know, had the Parkinson's not taken over, she was very, very sharp mentally. Um, mm -hmm. I think she would have been around a lot longer. But yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, um, well, I'm just so honored we got to be a, you know, a fly on the wall and see some of their life together. Do you, how do you guys think um, this experience and, you know, getting to spend uh, that time, Alexa Brendan, with the, with Pat and Terry for so long and just making this film, how what kind of effect did it have on you guys? Do you feel like you are changed in a certain way from, from this experience? Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, y y you also can't do anything for this long if it's not like a romantic relationship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try to be creating something with people that mm -hmm. you're not fighting with without it changing you in some way. But I think that it, it began to feel like a mission because I've said this before, but what was so remarkable about them was how unremarkable and simple and pure this was. And it's so rare. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, they're a beacon for us too. I, I mean, I, I feel that way. Yeah. I learned a real lesson in, um, you know, the, all the project, we've worked on a lot of great projects, but this one we worked on the longest and it was the hardest. And I think all of us would say we put the most of ourselves into it. And then mm -hmm. to have the success of Blumhouse coming on and Ryan coming on and Netflix and then what's happened with the film. It's just, it's a really good kind of validating feeling and teaches you, I think, in terms of things going forward, the kinds of projects you want to be on. Um, right. that matter that much to you and that you can see have an effect, you know, the varied effect it's had on people. Um, I think it just kind of is a real validation in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. And Chris, I know you um, also, uh, you come from the acting world. Do you think that directing, that this is something that you're going to, like, did it sort of open Pandora's box for you with this? Or do you think you'll keep pursuing more directing? Yeah, I think it did. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, you know, I love it. And I was, I'm very fortunate that I had such a wonderful team underneath me, you know, Brennan and Alexa and, and Mary and Blumhouse and Netflix and Ryan and Bernadine and Steve and Doug. I mean, it was just, you know, and they were, they were patient with me and, and, and allowed me to learn. Um, and I learned so much over the course of the past seven years and I did fall in love with it. You know, I, I was very fortunate. Alexa put me in touch with Nathaniel Kahn early on in this process, who um, is a wonderful documentary filmmaker. And, and I watched his, art, his, do, his documentary, My Architect, and was just blown away. Um, and, I had, and I got a crash course in filmmaking from him mm -hmm. over the course of a few hours. And I remember telling him, going, I can't, I don't know, I can't do this. I don't know, I, I have the story, but how do I do it? And he said, Chris, you know, there's more similarities than you think between acting and theater and film. And he said, you, you know, you, you know what makes a scene, you know, there's conflict and, 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 and dramatic. Um, and he said, just trust yourself. And so I was pleasantly surprised that there were actually a lot of parallels between being in the moment on stage and being in the moment behind the camera. Um, and I, it's, I, I, I don't know if I'll ever have another project like this in my life. Um, mm -hmm. I hope I do, but I'm just so grateful um, for this one because it was, it, it's just changed me. And um uh, you know, I hope I have the opportunity to make some more. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a beauty, uh, like you guys said earlier, of Netflix. It's really giving 
the a lot so many documentaries uh such huge exposure you know it used to be that you had to go to some small theater and try to find where the documentary was playing and it wasn't the access wasn't up there and so to be able to put out a film like this and like you said it go all around the world is is huge and um i think that the thing that we you know that you always worry about after all of this when it's something you care about so much is whether people will see it yeah and you worry about that literally until five in the morning on the day but you know this this has been it's just just been such a gift to mm -hmm. have this kind of exposure yeah well we're about we're about done and so <laughs> um uh i hate to i hate to leave i just wanted to ask uh the the one last question uh unless you you need to wrap up or you no, right ahead. okay i just i just was curious if uh i mean i think everybody that's watched this film has taken s some really beautiful things from it do you guys have anything personally that that you hope people take from from watching a film like this You know, it's funny, I think it's subjective. I think that if it moves you in any way, shape or form, we've done our jobs. Mm -hmm. I always just kind of hope that we could get this film in front of people that maybe in their immediate life don't have any um, examples of an LGBT person and they could see a relationship like this and kind of see it through a different prism because I think Pat and Terry are so non-threatening mm -hmm. and to be able to use, you know, this love story as a way in to have people maybe go, hmm, maybe I don't feel the way that I did previously about this or an evolution or a step in the right direction. I think that for me would be the big win. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think for me, it's, you know, it's also that we, we have this kind of idea that this kind of love is only possible in heterosexual relationships. Um, and it, it's amazing. It's not. And, and Pat and Terry show that. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that resonates with people and opens up their minds a little bit. I think too, to give other people courage to be able to share who they are with their families and, and where they work. And, you know, there's still obviously a lot of work to do, but, you know, allowing people to be in their truth and be who they are, regardless of what that is. Absolutely. Terry and Pat are great examples to people. <laughs> yes, I want like, Anyone who's ever had any sort of negative feelings towards, uh, you know, the the gay community or 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 thinking that that love has to be between a man and a woman, I want to be like, watch this film. Mm. <laughs> if you don't love this love, I mean, I can't help you. I mean, it's the greatest <laughs> love story, greatest love story I've ever seen, hands down, and. Uh, I mean, truly. And so congrats to all of you for all of your hard work. I know this was a labor of love and it shows and uh, you guys just did an incredible job. Thank, thank you, you for being so champion. Thank Absolutely. And thank you guys for letting me do this. Yes, thank you for doing it. Thank you all for joining us. This was amazing. Um, if any of you guys out there want to follow more, we have some more conversations coming up. You can just go to documentary.org. But again, I want to thank you, Fortune and Chris and Alexa and Brendan and Mary. This was really great. And tell Pat I love her. <laughs> I will. I will tell her. Please. She might be watching right now, Fortune. Yeah. Pat, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome thank you everyone have thanks a good night you. bye thanks a lot bye you guys bye